Hello everyone, welcome to soundproofguide.com. In this video, I'll talk about what is better, sound isolation clips or resilient channel to soundproof a wall. Soundproofing is a complicated process that a lot of people don't quite understand until they take on a project on their own. One of the most complicated parts of the process is going through and fully understanding decoupling. The goal of decoupling is to reduce vibrations as much as possible between the existing construction and new construction. To help with decoupling, people use sound isolation clips and resilient channel. They both provide value, but is there an ultimate option for people to count on? Let's take a closer look at the two options to help with decoupling and figure out which one is best. I will have a link in the description below of both of these products to price for your convenience. Just a quick pause, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to our channel. And also feel free to leave a comment, I would love to hear your feedback and also your questions that I would do my very best to answer. Thank you. We'll first start with sound isolation clips. The goal of sound isolation clips is to insulate the wall studs as much as possible. These clips are attached to the wall studs and then used to help out with screwing into the drywall. Sound isolation clips do not conduct sound, as they usually consist of some type of rubber. This helps with the isolation of sounds significantly, and many swears by them as the most consistent option. And now, resilient channels. Resilient channels has been around for a little longer, and some people have counted on them for decades. This happens by installing a channel that is perpendicular to the studs on the wall and drywall. The goal is to form a T-shape and then install the other layer of drywall after that. This makes the drywall not come into contact with the studs, which will isolate the sound quite a bit. Even though both methods are different, they both strive to help out quite a bit with soundproofing. They both help with the decoupling quite a bit, but is there one option that is better than the other? For people who are looking at the overall expense, resilient channels are the way to go. They are very inexpensive for nearly any type of setup, and most people try them out first because of that. The downfall of resilient channel is that installing them is a little trickier than some people may realize. If the installation process does not go exactly as it should, the resilient channels aren't going to make such an impact. That is why some people either shy away from using resilient channels or they will spend the extra money on having someone professionally install everything. Professional installation certainly has benefits, but it eats into the savings that some people already are looking forward to in doing a DIY project. It does make sense however because not only are resilient channels sometimes tough to install properly, but there is not the same type of uniform standards from a manufacturing perspective like there is with sound isolation clips. That is not to say that sound isolation clips aren't a little challenging to install as well. It does take some technical knowledge to take care of everything. But the process is usually a bit more straightforward. This is good news for people who want to take care of everything themselves instead of relying on a professional to help out. Quite a few studies has shown that the sound isolation clips do a better job with insulation than resilient channel. A lot of that comes down to a low resonance sound that they can rely on. Once the frequency of sound gets a little low, it is tougher to hear sounds that might be distracting without any soundproofing going on. Of course, for a better soundproofing, it does cost a decent amount of money to invest in sound isolation clips. Anyone who is looking for professional levels of soundproofing feels like it is worth the investment. Still, people not worried about having the best might not consider the investments worth it. So how to maximize the effectiveness? Sound isolation clips and resilient channels both help with soundproofing, but they can't take care of everything themselves. To maximize the effectiveness of both, there are some other tips to keep in mind. The first thing to always be aware is making sure there is enough mass added to the wall. It is a pretty simple concept, but a heavier wall is going to provide better soundproofing. That is why people try to add thicker layers of drywall when they are working on construction. 
I always recommend drywall that is 5 8 inch thick. While adding a lot of mass helps, there comes a point where people don't want to add so much that it is taking up a good amount of space. Soundproofing really works best when substantial, dense mass fits without shrinking the wall too much. Click the link above for a video of 7 different ways on how to soundproof a wall the DIY way and that won't break the bank. Now counting on good dampening options. A significant key to soundproofing involves using a suitable dampening compound. The goal of a dampening compound is to reduce significantly the amount of sound transmitted by converting standard sound energy into heat. Green glue is just one standard option in this category. Dampening works very well in conjunction with sound isolation clips and resilient channel. The beauty of green glue is that it is applicable in a so many different ways. Some soundproofing experts usually try to have green glue around at all time if needed for one project or another. It does help for a multitude of soundproofing projects including soundproofing a door, which you can click the link above to find out 15 ways on how to soundproof a door on your own. And in that video I will talk a lot more about green glue and how it works. Maximizing the effectiveness of the air chamber. Every single person who is decoupling a wall is looking to build an air chamber that helps with soundproofing. There is a balancing act of making sure the wall is not too thick but also maximizing the size of the air chamber. This is where everything gets a little complicated so make sure to take the time to understand better how to maximize the effectiveness of the air chamber and also how to use the decoupling properly. In order to get the most out of decoupling, people are always looking for extra benefits. It might seem like a challenge at first but decoupling pays off hugely if done well. Some people will take on a project and feel like they have everything under control themselves. Others will hire a professional to help out with the process and that usually goes a lot more smoothly. The simplest way to describe decoupling is that the goal is to build a room within a room. That means creating two separate stud walls and then eventually connecting them. It is very useful from a soundproofing perspective, but it does take up significantly more space. If the room is already quite small, shrinking it a bit by adding a room within a room might not be the way to go. To save space with construction, some people will go with a staggered stud wall instead of a double wall. This can reduce the amount of space taken up by more than 50%. The soundproofing might not be at the highest level possible, but most people are willing to make that sacrifice if they need the extra space. Unless the room needs the ultimate amount of soundproofing possible, the difference will not be that noticeable. How do sound isolation clips and resilient channel come into the picture? During the decoupling process, adding either one of these devices to a wall will act a lot like a mount. By using either one of these options as a mount, sound is absorbed and no longer longer can travel through the wall. If the entire setup is done properly, it can completely eliminate sounds heard. In other cases, it will significantly make an impact, but not to the completely quiet point of course. So why picking one of these options ultimately matters? Soundproofing is a pretty long process to get just right. People are always looking for methods that work in the right ways, and sometimes it comes down to trial and error. Sound isolation clips and resilient channels are both going to provide some value for people when they are looking to make an area a little more tolerable. Ignoring the opportunity to use either of these options is only going to limit just how much sound is eliminated into the room. Make sure to price both options before making the ultimate decision. If you have the money for sound isolation clips, you are probably going to provide better value in the long run. Just don't make a project more expensive than it needs to be by heavily investing in sound isolation clips over resilient channels. And don't forget to check out my articles How to Soundproof a Window and How to Soundproof a Door. The two articles also have a YouTube video tutorial, so make sure to give that a closer look if you need to add more soundproofing on a wall. So there you have it, hope you found this information very useful. Please let us know in the comment section below what options you chose and how it's working for you. We would love to hear any new ideas that could potentially get the job done easier and also cheaper. Every item that I talked about in this video can be found in the description below as a link to either their website or an Amazon link so you can easily find it and go buy it for yourself. Also, if you like this type of content, consider subscribing to our channel. 
we would love to have you as a subscriber. Having more subscribers, likes, and comments makes our channel more successful. So anything you can do to help us, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.